Hi there, it's Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe here. And what we're going to look at is stabilizing footage inside of After Effects CC. Now the footage we're going to stabilize is shot using a DJI Phantom quadcopter. And then we have a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition on the bottom of it. Now we're using the gimbal. And, uh, and generally speaking, we get some pretty stable footage. However, when I'm going to do a little chase cam shot here with the car, we can get a little bit of movement as the uh, copter goes backwards and forwards, gets blown in the wind a little bit, and, uh, and we can get a little shakiness. Let's have a look right now. I'm going to do a quick RAM preview here, and you'll see what we've got with the footage. And as you can see there, it's pretty good, but we've got a little backwards and forwards motion going on there as I'm uh, kind of bouncing around a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to stabilize this using After Effects. And the way to do that is we, if you'll notice too, I've turned the audio off just to let you know. So we're not going to uh, hit you with the sound because it's quite loud. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is we're going to go up and we're going to choose effects and presets right here. And I'm just going to type in stabilize. And as I start to type it up, we'll see warp stabilizer is one of the options in here. So what we do is we simply, with our track selected here inside our comp, we can just grab the warp stabilizer, either double click or drag it on top of our comp here. And then what will happen is it will start to analyze. So what it's doing right now is it's looking in the background here and it's analyzing this piece of footage for the movement. Once it's analyzed it and figured out the movement, then it's going to go back and resolve the movement and stabilize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this off for a second and I'm going to hit cancel and I'm just going to go to another track here which I've already done the analyzing on and we're just going to have a quick look here and just see what we've got. We've got the warp stabilizer here, it's turned on, it's been analyzed and right now what we have is just the default settings right now. So we're just going to have a look and play this back and then we're going to look at how we're going to modify the settings. So if you look at it, notice how much smoother it is right now just by applying the Warp Stabilize. However, using the standard uh, options, sometimes watch what happens to some of these trees and things. Sometimes they tend to bend a little bit and get some of that jello effect, which is what we get from an unstabilized copter, but we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back under the results here and we're going to change the method from subspace warp to position scale and rotation. Now notice it's doing a restabilizing and it doesn't take long for it to think because it's the analyzing that takes a while. So once it's been analyzed, when we change these options, it'll happen very quickly. However, we'll have to click on the RAM preview button and what it's doing right now is it's loading everything into RAM preview and it'll go back now and it'll play it in real time. And notice now we get a very nice movement within the speed. I'm just going to hit the space bar right now, stop playback and I'm going to show you one other option. Right now on the framing what we're doing is we've got this set to stabilize crop and auto scale. So what it's doing is it's actually you can see the auto scale set to 110. If I turn this off and I just choose stabilize crop you'll see what's happening. What it's doing for the stabilizing is it's stabilizing the frame but then it's blowing it up to compensate. So you'll see if I go back through here and we'll see, you'll watch the actual frame itself. You can see how it just kind of jumps around a little bit once it's RAM previewed. And you'll see it there. And what this is doing is the frame itself is moving because it's taking the footage, it's stabilizing it and then moving with the net area and then scaling it up. Now the reason I turned the scaling off is because if we go up to the composition and we look at the composition settings, notice I shot this at 2.7K. So this is 2704 by 1524. Uh, so the bottom line is it's not really a size that you're really going to deliver very often. In fact, if anything, you may deliver it at 2K, but more likely than anything, you're actually going to deliver it in 1080, which is 1920 across by 1080 up. So what we're doing is by shooting it at a larger resolution, we're able to capture more footage so we can have these edges and this will give us a little bit of space to throw away as we crop and recompose the shot. 
Now I'm also going to do that because notice we've got the blades appearing in the shot sometimes, or the rotors. So I'm going to change the size of this right now with the lock aspect ratio turned on. And when I change this to 1920, now it's going to change the height as well, which is 19, uh, 1080, not 1082, don't, don't worry about the two pixels. And we're just going to click OK. And now what we've done is we've actually just scaled down our screen size, but our footage is still the same. So it's a non-destructive move, as you see the footage is still there. So what we can do now is we can scale our footage down to fit within this new size and we're not losing any quality that we would do by scaling it up. So I'm just going to hold down the option key and then just click down to um, scroll out. What I'm doing just zooming out. The other way we could do it is we could just zoom out here. You can see we can zoom in and out. And the reason I'm zooming out is so I can see my handles. I'm just going to hit the uh, space bar so I can move it around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to click on the edge, start to drag, and as I start to drag, hold down the shift key, and this will constrain the proportions. So what we want to do is pull it up a little bit, and then I'm just going to move the position and change it to about there. And now as we scrub through, you'll see what we've got here. We've got our footage there, and uh, we're able to minimize some of the stuff at the top there that we don't need. Let's, in fact, pull it up even more, right up to about there. And you'll notice that we got a little loose in the battery uh, compartment popped open. So that would have to be cropped out, but we could just simply go to there, shorten the length of our clip so we can cut that out. And there we go. So now if we want to go to this one, fit to 100%. So what I'm doing is just choosing fit up to 100. So that means if you're using a higher resolution image or screen, you'll see this at 100. Uh, it won't go larger than 100%. So let's play this back now. And what it's doing, once again, is loading it into RAM Preview. And it's going to take a little second here before it goes into full speed. And there we go. And there's our footage there. And it's nicely cropped right into 1080. So the last thing you might want to do is to send this out of After Effects so that we can put it into Premiere Pro or Photoshop for further editing. So what we would do in this case is we would just choose the comp and then we would choose Add to Render Queue. And by adding it to the Render Queue, it just gives us a few more options that we would get sending it out directly, which we have the option here. We could send it directly to Adobe Media Encoder, but we have more options in here that we can play around with. So I'm not going to get too bogged down in the settings right now, but what we're going to do is we're going to export this out at a, as a lossless format. And you'll notice here, render options, I set for best settings, output module is lossless. But we're still going to click on here, and we can see here's the options there. And typically what I do is I choose the, um, the custom one. And then by clicking on the custom one, let me close that down. We get our options here, and we can see here's our formats. We're here, we've got our color management, so we can preserve our RGB if we want. Um, in this case, we're not going to get into all of that, though. So the main options, what we want to do is we want to use QuickTime. And we're going to choose the format options, and you'll see the Kodak here. Right now, we've got Animation. You'll see some other ones here. Uh, ProRes is a very good one if you have it, because that will preserve a lot of your quality. But Animation is a lossless format, and it also supports transparency. So if you're working with alpha channels, you can do this. It's a slightly older format but um, it works quite well. So we're just going to put that on there. We're going to choose audio. And your audio codec, you want to choose either Apple lossless or uncompressed. Click OK. And of course, you know, I'm working on uh, the Macintosh operating system. So if you don't have all these codecs, you, you, will, you should have the uh, animation codec. I have some other ones because of other software installed on my machine. But if you have After Effects installed on here, Chances are you're going to have a lot of these codecs. Um, so what we're going to do at this point here, once we've done that, is you'll see that our resize, we don't have to resize because we've changed it to 1920 by 1080. And we're just going to click OK. And then choose the path where we want it to go to. And I'll just call this one
uncompressed, and I can't spell compressed. Uncompressed staff is stabilized, and I'm gonna drop it into here, and then I'm just gonna simply hit save. Now, you could go back and work and keep adding videos into the render queue if you wanted. And then when you're ready, you just simply click up here on render, and then what it's going to do is it's actually going to encode and render this video right now. As you can see, what's happening is it's encoding that live. And you'll see down the bottom there, it's telling us how much RAM is used. And it gives us how much time is gone and, uh, you know, just other little bits of information there. And it shows us the elapsed time and the time remaining. You can see here that it's rendering a pretty close, a little slower than real time there. Um, and then when that queue is finished, we're going to be all encoded and then we can just take that video and then work on it further in other programs such as Premiere or Photoshop. So thanks for watching.